Hello everybody, Drifty here from Driftwood Gaming and we're back in RPG Maker MV. Today we're going to do, or this episode rather, it's actually 3 in the morning, but right now we're going to do a, a nice little gambling script that I put together. It's, it's an event sequence, but it's not really a script. Um, however, it's going to be like a two-fold thing because we're going to be, uh, I'm going to show you guys how to make a dice roll. Uh, in this instance, it's a D20, but you can make it whatever you want it to be, a D6, a D100, a D1000. You could do whatever because you're just basically uh, controlling a variable to pick a random number and then outputting that number. So let's get started. So the first thing you're going to do is open up your database and then go to Common Events and then uh, change maximum if you need space, uh, get it on an empty spot. Then you're going to name it Dice Roll and then whatever it is just so you're clear on what it is you want to name it. Like if it's 1 to 100, write D100 or something like that. Just something that you can, uh, uh, so you don't, because you're going to call on this event and, you, and you're going to have to remember where it's at and which number it is and everything. So just, just name everything appropriately and this script should be super easy. So when you get started in this, uh, this uh, event, you're going to start off with like a, an animation or play sound effect just for flavor. You don't actually have to do that. Then the next thing you're going to do is control variables. So you right, uh, right click, insert new and you're going to um, control variables. So when you select a variable, you want to just uh, put it anywhere you want and name it like dice roll, d20. Um, I've gone with the scheme of naming the variable that I'm using uh, directly the same thing as the common event I'm calling. This is just for consistency and ease of use, but you can technically name it whatever you want. So once you've got that done, you're going to set it to a random number between 1 and 20 or whatever variable uh, whatever number you want actually if it's a d6 roll you just 1 and 6 after you've set that you hit OK then you're gonna show a text and in the text you're gonna say you roll a d20 and the number comes up as a what's a slash v7 well when we uh, control this variable I can see right here that it's, it's using this, the space of 7 for the variables so how you use um, the, the, the show text function to show a variable it's really easy you just do a slash like this and I believe that's the forward slash um, and then you do the V for variable and then in a bracket you put the number of the variable you want to show so if we were to preview this you see you roll a d20 and the number comes up as 0 and it's showing 0 not slash V7 because uh, all variables are set to 0 by default um, so that then after you've done that you're done that's the whole common event so then we're going to create a new event. That's how you make a dice roll, and that's the end of that. But uh, as a bonus to this video, I'm going to show you how to make a gambling, a quick little gambling system. So you just insert a new event, give it a graphic, call it whatever you want, and then we'll start off with uh, insert text. So you insert text, and you can say, welcome to my casino, and whatever, whatever. Mine says, we host a whopping one game. You want to play? And then underneath that, you show choices. So you insert show choice, and then you can... Uh, specifies uh, these this is flavor however you want the first option will be your like go ahead let's gamble uh, choice the second one could be uh, no I don't want to gamble or I don't gamble or whatever um, but I've opted to put in how's it work to explain to the player you know they're gonna spend their their hard-earned gold here they're gonna wanna know how the, the what are the rules so you that's a pretty good function to put in so number two how's it work three don't gamble that's a, a in the conversation type thing so underneath that, you're gonna after the show choices, uh, when they say roll the dot, roll the dice, you're gonna insert a text, just basically saying, all right, place your bet. And then you're gonna control variables again. You're gonna create a new variable here, insert control variables, and then I'm using gold carry 29 here. <clears throat> so basically, you're gonna pick another spot, uh, nothing that's already used, and you're gonna insert uh, a text for it like gold carried or amount of gold or something like that to, to let you know when you call on it later that this is to check for how much gold. Then we're gonna set it to game data. And uh, game data is it's a really cool function where you can basically set a variable based on uh, like how many items of this you have in your in your possession or if you're wearing the armor, it'll be set to one or uh, where the party's at even. But if you go to other, you see all these options, select gold and then hit okay. So now it's setting this variable to the, the amount of gold you have in your inventory. Underneath that, you're going to input a number. So this will be, um, I'll just show you right here. You go to new, input number is right at the beginning. So it says uh, message, right underneath the message thing in the first box. Uh, input a number, and you can have as many digits as you want, but you have to create a new variable uh, again. 
So on this one, I created a, a variable called gambling bet, and uh, I put that one right next to gold carried. So you just uh, select gambling bet or call it whatever you want, select a new variable slot, and give it as many digits as you want them to be allowed to gamble with, and you hit OK. Underneath that, you're going to create a conditional branch. So you right click and you insert new, and you're going to click on conditional branch, that's flow control. And then uh, when you uh, open up that conditional branch, you want to set it to a variable, and you're going to select the gambling bet. And then you're going to select greater than, and then you're going to put uh, to another variable the gold carried. So if your gambling bet is greater than the gold carried, then um, do this. But we're also going to check the box that says create an else branch. Because what if they're saying I want to bet 100,000 and they don't actually have 100,000? So um, if they have, uh, if their bet is more gold than they actually carry, then the first thing we're going to say is input text saying you don't have that much gold. And then it's going to break because it's going to go all the way to the bottom and end, and that's the end of it. Um, then underneath the else mod uh, handler, we're going to put uh, a change of gold. Um, so basically, you just go to uh, insert new and then you're going to go change gold and then you're going to decrease by a variable the amount that they bet the gambling bet and then uh, once you've done that you just hit OK uh, and then you're going to call on the common event we just created the dice roll so you right click you insert new uh, common event it should be uh, I think it's right here uh, under flow control common event you input a com or you call for a common event and you select the dice roll d20 that we picked and then uh, underneath that, you're going to insert text. Um, where are we at? Here we go. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Scratch that. Underneath the common event call, we're going to create another conditional branch. And this conditional branch, you're going to say the variable dice roll, uh, d20, is less than or equal to 11. Uh, before I go into this, I should explain how, how my game is working. So I'll go over the how's it work part just uh, jump into the bottom so you guys know so um, when you say how's it work it, all it does is explain a text box to you and then it ends so it says first you place a bet then you roll a d20 die and if you roll tw uh, 12 to 19 you double your bet if you roll a 20 you triple your bet if you roll a 1 to 11 the house wins and you lose your bet so that's uh, I should have started with that but that's basically what we're, we're designing so now that you understand how that works um, we're gonna go back to um, the conditional statement so we just called on our uh, common event uh, in underneath this uh, else handler. You know, if you if the gold gambling bet's big, uh, bigger than the gold that they carry, then they don't have that much, and it ends the else handler. You're gonna change your gold, uh, insert um, new, change gold, and you're gonna decrease that by the gambling bet. Uh, I'm sorry. Then that then we have the dice. We call the common event of the dice roll d20, and you can see the script right here, so you can copy it. Um, if dice roll d20 is, uh, I'll go back to the conditional branch, the dice roll is uh, less than or equal to 11, then do this, and we're going to create a conditional branch in here as well. So if it's, uh, if they roll under uh, a 12, then we're going to say, you've lost the, the roll, try again, and then it's going to end here. And then the else handler for that is, if they rolled a 20, so then we create uh, underneath the else handler for this it's nested conditionals it can get confusing but I'm going step by step so underneath this conditional under the else mod handler we create another conditional uh, branch so we right click insert conditional and this conditional branch is going to have the variable dice roll d20 equal to 20 so if this is equal to 20 then do this um, also check create an else branch because we have to nest another conditional statement um, so if they got a 20, then we're going to say, nice, you rolled a 20 and you tripled your bet. So then we're going to change the gold uh, by adding a, a variable, insert gold, and then select variable, and select the gambling bet. Copy and paste that three times, because they've already paid for their bet, so this is giving them their money back. And then you're giving them double their money here, and then the third one is tripling their money. Um, so underneath the else handler that we checked the box for, you'll have an else statement right here. Um, you actually you don't need to nest another conditional because if it if it was it, it can only be 1 to 20 and if it if, if it wasn't 1 to 11 and it's not 20 then it's got to be 12 to 19 so you don't have to make a conditional statement for this so you just say else the text uh, you insert a text you've won and you doubled your bet 
change gold gambling bet, change gold get by positive gambling bet again. So they get their money back and then they double it. And then that should be the entire script. Uh, underneath how's it work or the second option, you can explain your rules here. And this is this is you know a simple uh, D20 gambling system, but you can change all these numbers and make a, a however you want basically. So let's take a look at the script in action. Let's save it. In this uh, to test it, uh, I'm on my little test map here. I've inserted a, a I made a quick uh, event creation, and I've just awarded myself a thousand gold in a treasure chest to test it out. So we're gonna save it. We're gonna grab our gold real quick. Okay, so we got a thousand gold. We're gonna talk to him. Um, welcome to the Grand Casino. We host a whopping one game. Want to play? Don't gamble. So we should still have our thousand. All right. So nothing happened. Um, I always exhaust all options, really. So let's see. How's it work? Okay. First you place a bet. Blah blah blah. And nothing else happens. He just explains to you. Um, okay. And now we're gonna roll the dice. So excellent. Place your bet. So now we're inputting a number, and we have a thousand. Let's see if we can <laughs> we can bet a million gold. Uh, you don't have that much. Okay, did it take any gold away? No, we still have our thousand. Okay, so let's bet a hundred gold. Let's see if we can bet a hundred gold. We have a thousand. We should be able to bet. You roll a d20, and the number comes up as an 11. Ooh, so close. You've lost the roll. Try again. So we should have 900 gold now. Oh, we have 900 gold. Let's try it again. Let's roll until we get a 20 so, so that we can see. Number comes up at 19, close to 20. You've won and doubled your bet, so we should be back at a thousand. Yeah, we're back at a thousand. You can see in the bottom right corner, or bottom left corner, right here. I want to get a 20 so that we can show the whole script to you guys. I've already tested it, but come on, we got a 16. Oh, we double, we double up. So we have 1,100. Uh, we got a one. Well, we lost that. We should be back at a thousand probably. Um, nine. Oh, we're at 900. And 18, we're at a thousand. 14, we should be at 1100. 18, we should be at 1200. 12, well, we still got it. That's 1300. Come on, give me a 20. 11, we lost that one. Give me a 20. I want to triple my money. Just want to show you guys. <laughs> Come on, we got a 5% chance to get it. We got a 20, all right, let's see what happens. Nice, you rolled a 20 and tripled your bet. All right, so we ended up with 1,400. Um, it's a pretty lenient uh, system. I think that it's actually not even favor of the house. If we wanted to, it's, it's really close though, because um, if we wanted to make it in favor of the house, we would just change the numbers by one. So if they roll a 12, instead of winning on a 12, they would lose on a 12, and then, and then even with the triple, I think it's in the house's favor by a little bit. And if you wanted to make it even harsher, if they have to roll a 14 or higher to to win, you know, double and 20 is still a triple. Uh, if if you were to get rid of that triple modifier, then having it uh, 11 is a loss, th then it's automatically in the house's favor. But you guys can uh, mess with the statistics. I just wanted to go over how to make a common, uh, like a D20 or a D6 dice roll script or a um, common event and how to make a little gambling system to put in a side game to put in your and you could even instead of having a guy you can make it like a, a machine and make a casino type slot machine type rolls and I mean really the options uh, are endless it's really up to your imagination I'm gonna let you guys go thank you guys for watching I really appreciate every viewer I get if you like this sort of content give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you want to keep updated I'm uh, planning to put out a lot of MV stuff because I'm super psyched and hyped for it I've been waiting a long time for this to come out, so um, I'm definitely going to give you guys some more content as much as I can. Um, thank you guys for watching again. We'll see you guys in the next tutorial.